In this video, we're going to look at a problem that tends to get students stuck as they're solving systems by substitution. It's actually a non-problem, but students are kind of nervous about it when it comes up that it becomes more of a problem than it is, and that is that we know that in order to get a problem started with substitution, we must get a variable completely alone first. We have to solve for one of the variables. Usually, we are suggested to solve for a variable that has nothing in front of it, but here the x doesn't have a coefficient, the y doesn't have a coefficient, the x doesn't have a coefficient, and so we stop and say, oh, no, which one do I solve for? We have three options. It's really a non-problem because truly we can solve for any one of the three. It doesn't matter, and we will always get the right answer every time. It doesn't matter which one you solve for. So, my arrow's pointing at that x right there. Let's just solve for this x in the second equation. x minus y equals negative 1. We're going to get that x alone. And I picked that one simply because it was there. There's no real method to it. I could have picked the other x. I could have picked the positive y from the other equation. It doesn't matter which one you pick. You'll get the same answer either way. So let's get it alone. We can do that by adding y to both sides. It tells us that x is equal to y minus 1, or negative 1 plus y. And now that we see x is equal to y minus 1, this means the x in the other equation can be replaced with the y minus 1, because it's really the same thing. They're equivalent to each other. So the x gets replaced with y minus 1, plus y equals 5 in that first equation. And now we can solve the remaining equation quite quickly. There's nothing to distribute, so we'll jump to combining like terms. 2y minus 1 is 5. Add 1, 2y equals 6, divide by 2, y equals 3. And we've got our value for y. Now we have to go back and find the x. We can do that by looking for that x equals equation. With substitution, it's nice. There's always going to be an x equals equation, or a y equals, if you're looking for y. We already have y, so we're looking for x equals. There it is, x equals y minus 1. So x equals y, which we just found out to be 3 minus 1, x must equal 2. We now know where these two equations are going to intersect. x comma y, 2 comma 3 is the pair of numbers that will make both of these equations true. If we have more than one lone variable, we simply have to solve for one of them. It does not matter which one you solve for. You'll get the same answer either way.